if we choose the weight this here is the weight of n prime times a of 2 to n something like this and we are going to prove that this this converges to n only if the origin of series converges so uh, what we can uh, do is to take a look at this and um, I will, I will highlight what we are summing here. I will uh, show you that this thing on the right always dominates the origin of series a n. So what we are doing basically is we take the term a a zero and we sum it with the weight one. Yeah. Then uh, we take um, we take a term um, as. Uh, as Sorry, we take term, term 1 and we sum it with the weight, uh, weight 1. So, uh, yeah, okay, um, it, it is like the first the first term, it, it's, it is not, not the exact thing, but uh, basically like we, are, we are like summing uh, everything except the uh, 0. Yeah, we are not. Uh, so, we start at a, a1. Yeah, so, we take the a1 and we sum it like this. Now we take a2, which is this value here, and we sum it twice. Now we take a4, sum it four times. a8, sum it eight times, and so on. Yeah, so as you can see, like what we are basically doing is that we, instead of summing a1 plus a2 plus so on. Uh, I, will, I will write it to make it. Yeah. We take. Uh, yeah, and the eight, uh, the a a zero is here, but we will forget about it because we don't really care about the value a zero. So what we are going to do? We take a one and put it there one times. Then we take a two and put it there twice. Then a four and put it there four times. Then a zero and, and so on. Put it there eight times and and, and so on. And uh, what we know is, since the terms are decreasing, then this this thing here is larger. It dominates the origin of series, meaning that if the origin of series two to n times a two to n converges, it implies then some a n also converges. Yeah, but this is only this is only one one relation and so we need also to prove prove it the other way. So we again can draw a picture like this. So we will start with one. So the terms of A and are going like this. Then two then four then 8, then 16, and, and so on. Yeah? And so now, now we are going to do it in an exactly uh, opposite way. Um, instead of like uh, summing uh, these uh, 16 terms, after that we are going to sum the the eight previous terms. Yeah, so we take these eight terms here. Yeah, then we take these four terms here. Then we take two terms here and one term here. Yeah. So previously we were making staircase uh, stairs which were like uh, basically over the function over the sequence now we are making it under the sequence yeah so the thing is that uh, we uh, we can imagine like that we take this 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 thing here and we divide the weight by half yeah we divide the whole the whole sum by half and now we know that we are already under under the function yeah, so what we are doing, we take a2 plus a4 plus a4 plus 
A8 plus A8 plus A8 plus A8 plus A16 and so on. Yeah? And now we know that the original original series was dominating the other the, the R series, so meaning that some A n converges in parts that sum of two two n one half of this this thing here, but it's the same as the other one half, two two n times a two two n converges. And so this this concludes this concludes uh, the proof. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we can we can use use this thing here to uh, basically uh, show that, um, like for example, one over n uh, diverges. And so, how are we doing? We, we use condensation criterion. So instead of it, we are going to work with two to n times 1 of over 2 to n which is exactly series of all ones and we know that if we are summing once over and over again then we go to infinity meaning that this thing is diverges so also the original series was diverging yeah or more generally n to alpha so we take the condensation criterion is 2 to n times 1 over 2 to n to alpha so uh, this is this is nothing else than sum of 1 over 2 to n times uh, uh, 2 to n minus 1 yeah, and so uh, so this is uh, this is some kind of some kind of uh, geometric. Ge this is a geometric series where um, Q is equal one over two to alpha minus one. So we just need to uh, uh, we just need to check whether one over uh, two to alpha minus one is uh, is small or no large, whether the Q is smaller than 1. Yeah, and Q is smaller than 1 if uh, if this alpha minus 1 is, is uh, positive. Okay, which concludes our theorem. In other words, if alpha is larger than 1. Okay, so we were able we were able to to uh, solve solve this this thing this thing in in general using condensation criterion using using geometric series again as as before and um, so let me let me show you one one more uh, way how to how to show that uh, one over n diverges and it's uh, the following uh, the following idea like it's very similar as uh, as we were uh, like calculating before like basically what you can do is you can imagine every sum as some kind of staircase now you have some value at a0 you have some value at a1 you have some value at oh, sorry a2 yeah, yes, some value at a3, and so on. So basically, what we are doing is you're summing some stairs like this. So this is the term a0. This is the term a1. This is the term a2. And this is the term a3, and so on. This, this for example, will be the term a4. Yeah. So if we are summing these things together, something like summing of, of these of these areas areas of, of these, these stars together. And now if we are calculating some area, this is something uh, which we are doing in, in calculus a lot and this uh, just basically means that uh, we we need uh, to calculate uh, some some uh, integral of, of some some function we need to calculate some some area some volume always always there is some some integration 
integration involved. So we can use some kind of integration test that instead of working with uh, this uh, staircase, which is kind of ugly from the point of analysis because it's like summing of, of like uh, countably many many different numbers, we are going to put some some function over it, for example, like this. Uh, and if the function is going to be larger than the whole staircase, yeah, so this will be the function fx. And if it's larger than the whole staircase, then uh, we can, what we can do is we can take a, a look at the integral of this function from 0 to minus infinity. And if this thing is finite, and we know that this red area is already finite. And if the red area is finite, then also the staircase has to be finite. So it implies that some a n converges. And similarly, if you would, if you would take some another function which is like under under the whole staircase, and if this area would be already infinite, we can we can uh, show we can use it to show that the staircase is also infinite. Okay, so so let me let me show you at this example one over n. So we have the stairs which are like this. Uh, 1 over 0 we, we need to skip, but so the first stair is 1. Yeah. The second stair is 1 half. Like this. So can for example imagine that we have like stairs like this. And we have one third. Then one fourth, one fifth, and so on. Yeah, so the, like the boundaries of the, of the staircase look like this. Yeah. So uh, we can like uh, we can like we can like pretty much use this function f x equal one over x, and we can calculate what is. Uh, what is like the, the volume from 0 to plus infinity from fx uh, which is which is not not so not so difficult uh, so we need we need to find a primitive function to to fx 1 over x uh, which is which is um, nothing else than uh, logarithm of uh, of absolute value of 1 plus x which uh, so so this thing here is logarithm of absolute value 1 plus x and we calculate it from 0 to infinity at 0 we have logarithm of 1 which is 0 at infinity we have logarithm of infinity which is which is plus infinity yeah. And uh, similarly, so so now we know we know that um, yeah we know uh, we basically don't know much. We know that it's more than infinity. So what we are going to do is to um, is to use another function uh, g g x to one over, and now we shift the function to the left, meaning x plus 1 and then now uh, this uh, if, we, if we calculate the integral we will obtain that it's logarithm of of 2 plus x all 0 to infinity and one again we will obtain that it's plus infinity so meaning that uh, we know exactly that this this sum is is plus infinity moreover we know we know something more we know that if we take first n terms of this infinite sum then it will be roughly a logarithm of n yeah because if we take yeah it's exactly the case that we take just sum from 0 to n of the 1 over x and this is roughly logarithm n 
Yeah. So we can not only use this integration test to, to test uh, convergence or divergence, we can also get some bounds how fast is the 